Hello, you're welcome to the City Newsroom on the City TV. My name is Pearl Akanya Ofuri. And I am Michael Obodu. Coming up. More deaths recorded and over 700 people displaced in 12 communities along the White Volta in the North Gonja district of the Savannah region following spillage of the Bagri Dam. It's more than 30 years we've never experienced this. Uh, this year, it has come, it destroyed many things, our farm products, and then it enters into our houses. Customers of defunct finance companies to now receive cash instead of bonds as government releases over 6 billion cities to fully settle their claims. Also coming up, ECOWAS leaders meeting in Ghana result to ensure civilian rule is returned to troubled Mali. And residents of Santasia, Pre and Himan in the Ashanti region protest over bad roads in the area. We the citizens in Apre, Himan and Petia, they are from. No road for us. Our road, when you go, the time will pass. You will change. The car, always. Do you for three, for three, for three, for three. And as we get the details of our stories, a 10-year-old child has died and over 700 people from 12 communities along the White Volta in the North Gonja district of the Savannah region have been displaced by floods. The White Volta overflowed its banks due to the spillage of the Bagre Dam in Burkina Faso and submerged homes and farmlands in the communities. City News' Savannah Regional Correspondent Richard Fogo joined the Regional Minister on a visit to the affected communities and reports. The affected communities are Daboya, the district capital, Dambolto, Wawato, Lingwisi, Disa, Singa, Tare, Mankargo, Yagbu, Sekpala, Kalorbeso, and Sekwege. As at the time of filing this report, none of the aforementioned communities was accessible from Daboya, the capital. The community members say they woke up three days ago to see water entering their homes. It started last week. The water was coming gradually, gradually. After we heard the news that uh, they've opened the Bagri Dam. And every year, this is the way the water comes, but not up to this level. In fact, it's more than 30 years we've never experienced this. Uh, this year, it has come, it destroyed many things, our farm products, and then it enters into our houses. Over 750 people have so far been displaced with several hectares of farmlands submerged. While some of the victims are receiving shelter from family members and friends, others are being housed at the Wasibi Senior High School in Daboya. In the evening, we just pack our things and lock up inside the local town. Maybe we'll get to school or a friend place. Then the following day, we come back. We come back because of the distance. You can't see you are going to, for the lights. But when the lights, the water enters inside the distance, the cable. It can cause problems. So we all have that. We are looking for uh, this. Electrician, come and help us with the things. Our fridges, our everything is spoiled. Mohamed Toher is the Savannah Regional NADMU coordinator. There are places that it has to take us time before we reach and then get the total number of affected cases. Now that we have come here, we'll go and organize ourselves to come and assist those who are affected. The Savannah Regional Minister, Sally Fubrama Adam, expressed worry over the lack of attitudinal change of the people despite several warnings to stop staying close to the riverbanks. And we've all seen this house should have not been here. Even that house was close by. It shouldn't be here. You know, so that's why 
Nobody needed to come and tell them to move out. But you see, they are so much attached to the house. We are appealing to them that anything can have to move. So it's education. Nadmo and Co will come now with to use force to move them. And you, the response that we will also get from the people. The challenge, that's the challenge, we Africans, not Ghanaians alone, that's what we are facing. So we have to keep up the education. Now, it's your life. You know, your life is more than any other thing. The Brazilian construction firm working on the Bogatanga Boku Road in the Upper East Region, Queros Gava, has started construction works on the washed of Kobore stretch. Now, the road got destroyed following the spillage of the Bagri Dam, coupled with torrential rains in that region. The situation has grounded cargo vehicles and compelled passengers to use canoes to cross to either Boku or Zebila. The construction firm is hopeful of fixing the road as soon as possible to allow easy passage for travelers and goods. Following the assurance by Vice President Dr. Mahamud Bawumia after a visit to assess the devastation by the floods in the area that the washed off stretch of the road will be fixed, construction firm Koraos Galvao has begun works on the road to ameliorate the plight of both residents and commuters. The Kubori stretch of the Boga Boku Road has been barricaded to allow filling of the washed off portion and building up of the road. Resident engineer of Corral's Galvao, engineer Peter Dagadu, tells City News they are optimistic of fixing the Kubori stretch of road urgently. Our plan is to reinstate the road, fill the gap with boulders and build the road up. At the moment, we are sending an excavator there and we are expecting boulders from logistics in Borga. As soon as the boulders get here, we fill the place up, ram it, compact it, and build up the road. However, for the future, there will be a new bridge to the left of the existing bridge now, upstream, to the upstream of the existing bridge. It will be 184 meters long with new approaches. Some residents of Kubori and drivers have commended government for the swift intervention, but appealed for quick execution of the project. When I came, I saw that the contractor is there on the side, struggling to see how we can pass it temporarily. But we have been hearing that it's the contractor who is trying to see how we can help the, the people out we are stranded. And the people part to the canoe to cross. And not everybody who will be willing to risk their life to the canoe. So it's not easy over here. But we are so grateful that the contractor is on the side, trying to see how people can able to go to the other side. Meanwhile, the Northern Electricity Distribution Company, NETCO, has donated relief items to the Upper East Regional Directorate of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, to support flood victims in the region. Speaking to City News, the managing director of NETCO, Mr. Osman Ayuba, said the initiative forms part of the company's corporate social responsibility. We've lost uh, lives. And life, a life once lost cannot be brought back, you understand? But what can we really do to alleviate the suffering of the people? Once their lives have been lost, their farmlands have been lost, uh, houses have been lost, it's, you cannot actually compensate them. So this is actually not a compensation, it's just a token to just uh, lessen the plight. On his part, the NADMO regional coordinator, Jerry Asamani, commended NETCO's timely intervention and appealed for more relief items for the flood victims. However, 
senior government public relations official for the Pualugu Multipurpose Dam Project, David Pra, says works on the Pualugu Multipurpose Dam Project have commenced in earnest and when completed will end the perennial floods in the Upper East region. Work has already started. The surveyors are also on site. They are demarcating their dam boundaries. So very critical, uh, they are also demarcating it. The reservoir uh, space is about 350 kilometers square. So it's, it's so large to contain the volume of water that Bagre will spill. The Ghana Water Company Limited in the northern region says it may be forced to shut down its treatment plant at Dalung due to the rapid rising of the White Water River, which serves as the source of water for residents in parts of the region. Communities along the White Water have been affected and are appealing to the authorities for relief items. The opening of the Bagri Dam in Burkina Faso, coupled with days of rains, has destroyed hundreds of farmlands and left many displaced. Some major highways have also been affected. This time round, the rising white volta is almost at the neck of the pump machines. Currently, two of the three low lift pumps that abstract raw water from the white volta for processing has been shut down as a precautionary measure to prevent breakdown. The Northern Regional Chief Manager for the Ghana Water Company Limited, Engineer Amidu Musa, has been explaining to the media the implication of the situation on water supply to the Tamale metropolis and its environs. Yeah, on a normal day, we are supposed to produce uh, 44, 45,000 cubic uh, meters of water. So currently what we are doing is about 15,000 cubic per day because we are running one pump instead of three. Already when we even do the 45, we have to rush it because the demand currently is around 90,000 cubic per day and we are doing 45. Now we've dropped down to 15,000, so you can imagine. So when you get water, we advise that store it and use it judiciously because uh, there are some critical institutions we cannot deny. So we'll have to look at those institutions first before the rest of the public. In fact, we are supposed to shut the pump at 36 feet. And as at this afternoon, we have 35.75. So we are almost there, but uh, we hope God will listen to our prayers. Aside from the pump machines getting flooded, homes and farmlands of residents in Nawini, in the northern region, have been submerged in the flood water. Women and children are now seeking refuge in a school in the community with no access to portable water and wash facilities, but the current heaven is also being threatened by the floods. Some of the victims who spoke with City News are pinning for relief items. The whole place is flooded. Uh, since uh, three days today, we have no place to sleep. Snakes are running into us here. This is a school compound. But look at how the place is flooded. This is the highest ground that we are suffering here. And the raptors, they are just climbing. Today, we kill more than six snakes here. And uh, now how to even set fire to cook for our children is a problem. So we need some place to sleep. The, all the rooms are just falling inside. Our animals are just hanging on the stones and the trees over there. So we are pleading to the authorities to come to our aid. The water destroyed my house there. So that even if I won't sleep, I'm just sitting even it's uh, until any morning. I want them to supply us house, food, and dresses because our things. The Northern Regional Minister, Salifu Said, toured the treatment plant and affected communities and has assured of government support to salvage the threat at the plant and also support victims of the flood. I have come here, first of all, to look at it and make a very quick recommendation to Accra, especially the seat of government and also the sector minister, to ensure that we they quickly mobilize emergency submersible pumps that can survive being inside water to be able to supply water to Dalang, Kumbungu, Tamale and East uh, Pereaban communities.
If that doesn't happen, life will be very difficult for us. This is the situation that the residents here find themselves. And they are calling on authorities to come to their aid with relief items. From Dalong, I am Daina Nguan for City News. And let's bring you more of the day's top stories. And 14 people have died and several others injured in a Tuesday dawn accident that occurred at Ichire in the eastern region on the Accra Kumasi Highway. Our correspondent in that region is Neil Nia Matikanaku, and he has more in this report. According to residents, the accident which occurred on Tuesday dawn involved a deaf cargo truck believed to be heading towards the Kumasi Strait to Burkina Faso. Thus, a tie caused the driver to lose control of the steering wheel. The truck therefore veered off its lane and collided with two buses loaded with passengers from Kumasi heading towards Accra. The buses are an SDC bus with registration number GE 813116 and another U-turn bus with registration number GT 4997-20 were mangled beyond recognition. He took personnel from the police service, fire service, the ambulance service and NADMO hours to rescue the situation. Joseph Okaijan is the Ayenswano NADMO director. Road safety. I declare the air crime was if it's a room, a pussy, and some say an accident road. It was a eastern region, the air crime was so an illegal accident. I just saw a pass on our trip accident, yes. If you are a Tunisian situation, so three days in accident, yes. It's your best threat, Ashanka, for say, one of them will swap. One year, I feel you, Papa, I was half one week. Now, she has said, and you know, and the cars in the city, and so on. In fee, I guess one. No more cars, if you are crap, the cars, if you come out, ah, airborne, and the accident in the back. The bodies were conveyed to the Suhum Government Hospital morgue, and others with various degrees of injury are the Suhum Government Hospital and the Saum Government Hospital receiving care. This is not the first time such carnage has occurred on this particular stretch between Tichere and Esuboy. This regional minister, Eric Kwachidafo, is not a happy man. He wants transport unions to collaborate with the Road Safety Commission for drivers to be given refresher courses in defensive driving to help reduce human-related accidents. You see, our drivers sometimes will have to uh, get more training in defensive driving. You see, this, this is, vehicles are vehicles. I'm told the DAF truck had a, a tire bust and then he lost control. That's where the defensive driving comes in. What do you do in such a situation? Apart from that, uh, human error. People drunk driving, people over speeding, people not taking particular attention to, to road signs and road instruction. Mr. Kwashid Dafo, who admits the challenges, says government will do its best to complete the dualization of the Kwafu Chrome to Apega stretch. Government has a policy to dualize the road, and we are on it. We are on it. Very soon, the, the stretch between Kwafu Chrome and uh, Apega will be done. The China Water and uh, Electric Corporation, they are on it. Even last, last week I saw their certificate, I signed their certificates, and they are on it. That will reduce the fatalities and the crashes on the, on the road.
Now, depositors of the collapsed microfinance company, savings and loans and finance houses will from Wednesday, September 16, 2020, have full access to their funds. It follows the government's resolution of the original commercial paper, also known as bond. The government on Tuesday released a total of 3.5 billion Ghana cities to settle the remaining uh, depositor claims of the institutions of the 347 defunct microfinance companies, 23 savings and loans and finance houses. To help us more with this, we have been joined by host of the City Breakfast Show, Bernard Able. Welcome, Bernard. Thank you, Michael. Now, tell me, uh, you have a copy of the press statement from yes. the uh, the receiver. What, what more does it say? So it's a much anticipated press statement. They're basically saying that initially they estimated that they were going to pay people about 6.4 billion CDs. But 55% of that was going to be in the form of bonds. And only 45% was going to be in the form of cash. This led to some disquiet because customers felt that if I put money in a financial institution and for a reason which have nothing to do with the company collapses, why can't I get my money back? So government has realized that this is not a very popular approach to solving the problem. So the over 3.1 billion that they were going to pay in bonds, they decided to release that amount of money so that people would get everything paid in cash, including those who had started even uh, discounting the bonds. Because the bond that they were going to be given was a five-year bond it was non-interest paying. So to make it simple, if I put 10000 in a company and the company collapsed, the government was going to pay me a certain cap. We are told that people who earned, who had saved anything above 50,000 CDs will get only 50,000 CDs in cash and the rest will be paid in bonds. In fact, City News did a story on this and some of the customers spoke to us. They were very, very unhappy with this arrangement. Somebody who said he had saved over 670,000 CDs was going to give him 50,000 CDs in cash and over 600,000 in bonds he would get the money in five years and he wouldn't get any interest on it. You know there's inflation. So if there's even inflation of 10% per annum, by the time he gets his full payment, the value of that money will be lower. So this was a real bubbling issue. And so this is why the government has released the statement through the receiver saying that now everybody will be paid in cash. And he says government has made available approximately 3.5 billion CDs, equivalent to the total value of the bond component of the funding required. This additional cash will replace the commercial paper. And then it says, depositors who have even already discounted all or part of their commercial paper will receive the full refund in cash in each of the discounts they suffered. Now, I, I know you've ex interacted extensively with a number of these customers or their concerns. So we'll take a look at the video um, on the concerns they raise and come back and take your thoughts on what uh, this would mean for them. The, I mean, the money they give me is about uh, three quarters of my money. They give me about uh, uh, 50,000. And then the, the huge money, they put it on bond. And I'm asking me, what is the meaning of the bond? Is it a tradable bond? They were not able to tell me. They said the, money, the bond is just the that they should put it. So five years, you come and take the same amount. But I'm still asking them. They said maybe they will come They will come out with the different modalities so that they will know how they are going about. But as of now, CB, according to CBD, they said it's bond. They didn't give any modality about it. So whether the money should be tradable, the money should be there. Five years, you can come back and take your money. But I, what I, the inquiries I made, mean, the institutions, the big institutions, and those, they are giving the money full, cash, no bond. But with the individuals right now, they are giving us counting of the money, and they put a huge part of it as bond for five years. You come here before, they tell you, okay, you can only, they'll pay you cash 50000 if you're... Uh, your amount is above 70,000, they'll give you 50,000 now. Then whatever you have is put in bonds. The bonds, we are told you cannot assess the bonds until March 2021. Then you can start assessing some, not even the whole amount, bit by bit. But there's no uh, transparency in the whole. So those were some customers expressing their concern with the arrangement uh, government put in place to reimburse them their monies. But, uh, Bernard, uh, what was government's original position and what has influenced their change? So when a company collapses and you, you try and resolve it, the receiver has to realize, that's why I call it a liquidator. If the company has houses or cars, you liquidate, you sell, that's why they did the auction, and use the proceeds to pay customers and other people who had invested with the company. Government made available some money, but the money wasn't enough to pay everybody in cash. So it's always been a finance issue. Those who had below 50,000, the government could pay in cash, but people had millions. 
So government was saying, look, we can't realize all the money from the assets of these companies. Some of the companies didn't keep proper records. So we cannot pay everybody in cash. In fact, in July this year, I think 20-something July, I interviewed the finance minister on this matter, and I said, look, customers had said this idea of cash and bonds was not fair. His answer is very interesting because if you listen to what he said to me and what government has agreed to do now, it's a, a complete U-turn. So you can, you can you, I mean, the interview, I don't know if you have the interview. Yeah, we'll play that interview shortly, but for the sake of those who do not understand what a bond is, do you okay. mind highlighting briefly So what a that bond is? is really government borrowing from you. So if government issues a bond, they have bonded that they will pay you at a specific period. So as I said, if I had 10000 in a company and they said, well, we can only pay you 2000 in cash, your 8000 will pay you in a bond. That means that government has borrowed and will commit to pay you. Now, the thing with bonds is that bonds have two things. They have tenor, the length of time the government is supposed to pay you or the person who is borrowing from you, and the rate. What was bad about this was that, number one, the tenor was five years. I didn't have a say about it. Number two, there, there was no interest. So if the 800 CDs left in my example, you would pay me in bits of maybe two, 200 CDs every year, and I wouldn't even get 1% interest on that. Now, money has time value. And even if you have year-on-year -year inflation of being 2%, it's going to affect the value of this. So it was not a good deal. But because of all the challenges government is facing, and mind you, we are also in a post-COVID economy. All the projections for the economy have changed. The economy is essentially going to shrink. Okay, People have lost their jobs. There's already a liquidity crunch in the system. Now, the thing about financial institutions is that it's confidence that makes people send money. Because what banks essentially do is that you have more money than I do. I need money to finish my house. You have extra money. You send the money to Pell, who is the bank, because that's surplus money. So financial intermediation is simply Pell reallocating money from people who have more money like you to people who don't have money like me. Now, if I or you don't have confidence in what Pell does, the banking system doesn't work. Now, what has happened is that because Pell didn't run the bank well, you who put your money there, your money is locked up. And the government, the referee says, I'm going to pay you only X percent. So there was lack of confidence. So the banks are not mobilizing deposits. People are using money to buy houses. They are buying landed property. They don't want to put their money in the financial institution. So that's number one. Banks are mobilized deposits. Number two, there's a liquidity crunch. People have lost their jobs. There's no money to spend, right? What that does is that it further shrinks the economy. So I believe this is a decision. This U-turn has been necessary for three reasons. Number one, no confidence in the financial system. Number two, a liquidity crunch, which can further dumping growth. And I think politics, because last week we were at the NDC manifesto launch, and Mr. Mahama said, in one year of coming to office, I will pay everybody in cash. I don't want a payment plan, right? You have an election in less than two and a half months. I think these are the three reasons that led to what I consider a very sensible U-turn, because this wouldn't have ended well. All right, so we'll take a look at that uh, interview Bernard had earlier with the finance minister defending government's earlier position on paying the uh, customers of the finance houses. Somebody sent me a message today yeah. that they invested a million series with the financial institution mm. and they were being asked to come for either 500,000 now mm. and that's the end of the matter mm. or agree for the million to be spread in a five-year bond mm. with no interest. Mm. They feel they're being put between a rock and a hard place, mm. and it's not fair. Yeah. What, what's, your, what's your comment? Well, my comeback to it is that um, there's going to be burden sharing in things that we all actively participated in. Some of these institutions were not supposed to guarantee returns. They did. We went to certain institutions whose returns were a little richer than they should be. Um, but, you know, we talk about 92 to 93% of people have received their money, you know. Would there be collateral damage? Of course there will be. Would there be sacrifices? Of course there will be. If we have a war, maybe 40, 50,000 soldiers will be sent, and some households will lose their people. We don't come back. I mean, the community and society, in the end, must be made to stand strong.
So you had the finance minister there defending government's earlier position with regards to paying uh, customers off the uh, finance houses. Now, Bernard, you have had a lot of these customers call into your show with their concern. I'm sure they will welcome this news, don't you? I, I think so because it's, um, look, it would have been very bad to, to keep, because even if you're going to pay me in bonds, at least give me a proper return. True. But the five-year non-interest was a complete no-no. And I think the government has done the honorable thing by saying, you know what, we're not even going to renegotiate this. Pay everybody in cash. So I'm sure they'll be very happy. Thank you very much. You heard there uh, Bernard Avla, he's the host of the City Breakfast Show. Earlier I spoke to the Executive Secretary of the Association of Savings and Loans Companies, Trinibwa Kudria. Um, he shared his thoughts on this announcement by government. You must be very elated with government's uh, recent announcement. Uh, tell me, what does that mean for your industry? Thank you very much. Um, this one supports the fact that the central bank is very much interested in the stability and the growth of the SDI sector. Two, to also give more assurance to the depositors and customers in the um, savings and loans and the microfinance sector that they are still very important in the whole banking space. And the next thing is that it brings in more liquidity. It comes with improvement in liquidity and we believe that this is going to bring about the confidence and you see some people were doubting as to whether they will get their monies and all these things. And um, we are very grateful that it's happened at this time. Um, more people are going to be oil and they will be able to go about their duties and um, those who needed the funds to take care of their shops, their businesses, some of them needed to take, get the funds to take care of their sick ones and all those things will get access to these things. And the financial institutions who also had locked up funds with all the defunct institutions, they are also going to get money to continue to do better and credit delivery is going to improve. So we think that this is a good news. Uh, we commend the government for taking the step of ensuring that everybody is getting the money. So what is left has to do with the, the bank, that CBG, to ensure that they take care of every customer who got uh, their funds validated. And let's also take this opportunity to encourage the customers um, that um, anyone who has had his or her funds validated uh, should be rest assured that you're going to get all your monies. Now there is no bond. It's cash. Now, ECOWAS leaders meeting in Ghana have resolved to ensure that civilian rule is returned to Mali following a military coup that led to Malian leader Ibrahim Boubacar Keita leaving office. ECOWAS Chair President Ikufwada told journalists this after the closed-door meeting that ECOWAS mediator, former president of Nigeria, Good Luck Jonathan, will be in Mali to ensure that agreements reached are implemented. Let's get more in this report. The seven ECOWAS leaders from Togo, Benin, Senegal, Burkina Faso, Guinea, and Nigeria were at the Pedriasi Lodge upon the invitation of ECOWAS chairman, President Yakufado, to find a lasting solution to the political crisis in Mali. The West African country has seen its president, Ibrahim Keita, ousted in a military coup which brought in Colonel Asani Gota. At Tuesday's meeting, which was held behind closed doors, President Yakufado urged his colleague president to help resolve the Mali crisis. He told journalists after the meeting that pressure will be mounted on the military to hand over power to a civilian leader. Being able to reaffirm the positions of ECOWAS, we need a civilian leadership of the transition. And we've also made it clear that the minute that leadership is put in place through the processes that they themselves have agreed on in Mali, the sanctions that have been placed against, them, against Mali will be lifted by, by, by ECOWAS. So that's right. That, 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 that basically is now in the hands of the Malians. We made it clear. In a week's time, the mediator will be back in, will go to Bamako to see the state of play. I'm hoping that by the time he gets there, 
these things would have been completed so that the sanctions can be limited. But we're talking hopefully in days, not in weeks. And, and was this particular decision taken by in good faith by, by the current military leader? I believe so. I believe so. He was there, he listened, he participated in the discussions, but he insisted that he would have to go back and do the consultations with, with the those who are responsible for the decisions that they took and get their buy-in. And he was not prepared. And I, I think all of us understood that uh, it would take some, he would need to do that. But he's on his way back to, to Bamako as we speak. So, and as I say, uh, our viewpoint is that the matters that have been put out should be dealt with in, in, in terms of days and not weeks. You're still watching the City Newsroom on City TV. My name is Michael Obudu and I'm here with... Paola Kanyalfuri. Still ahead in the bulletin, residents of Santasia Pre and Himan in the Ashanti region protest over bad roads in the area. We've got more on that story shortly. Do stay with us. Rigworld Solutions, forging the frameworks of Ghanaian industry. Engineering solutions from the heart of Takrade Kejebil. At Rigworld Solutions, we manufacture industrial bolts and nuts, fasteners, hoses and fittings for the extractive and petrochemical industries. World-class products with local expertise. Locate our factory in Kejebil, of the Takrade Takwa Road. Call 0302-949917 or 0540-107504. Email enquiries at rigworldsolutions.com. Rigworld Solutions, crafted in Ghana, engineered for the world. laptops, quality TV sets. Let me show you my secret. Here is Franco Trading Enterprise. My secret for quality laptops, quality phones, quality TV sets. Accessories, come on. External hard drive, pen drive, name it. For book purchase and retails, come to Franco Trading Enterprise. They will reduce the price for you. Franco Trading Enterprise. Home quality. Welcome back to the City News. Let's bring you more stories now. Now, scores of residents of Santasi Apre and Heman in the Ashanti region have demonstrated over bad roads in the area. The residents accuse the government of neglect and have threatened to boycott the December polls if the roads are not constructed soon. Our Ashanti regional correspondent, Hafiz Tijani, has this report. It is dusty in the dry season and slippery, muddy, with huge gullies 
in the rainy season. That is the description residents of Santasi Apre, Herman, and adjoining communities have given to their roles. Police patrols are not able to carry out patrol duties as a result of bad roads here. These residents attribute this to the increase in crime in the area after a continuous appeal to get authorities to fix their road failed. The residents resorted to a protest on Tuesday. Since Santasi was become, became Santasi, it's been decades. And every time we ask for support, it's like we are not part of the Ghanaian community, yes. but yes. we are. At the moment, I was meant to be at work. I'm standing here, and I support this demonstration. I support it 100%. If they don't come and sort out and fix our roads, it's the same tax that I'm going to work for them to pay. Be the citizen in a pray. It's not good. So we are begging Nana that Nana Kufado that he, the citizen, voted for him. Nana, you know that you are doing very, very, very well for this country. Please, what I am saying is that we are begging Nana Kufado that you can't go and tell Patasi Road. You can't go and tell Ahojo. You can't go and tell Denyame and leave the citizen here in a place. Taxi drivers and commuters, including Land Laws Association, blocked the road to draw the attention of authorities. You can see the number of people here. What happened was like, the road was awarded 2008. Since 2008, we have seen different government coming and going. As you can see, they always come here and promise us they are going to tie the road for us, especially when it is the eve of the election. They will come here and promise, oh, the next day they are coming. 2016, we were here a day before the election. We saw them bringing machineries. They broke good days. They started constructing the road. Immediately after the election, we never saw them again. Last three months, we heard that the road has been awarded to somebody. As of today, we don't know which contractor is on the road. Meanwhile, in Kumasi here, we have seen a lot of development going on, a lot of road construction going on. So when are we also going to see ours? That's why today we are charged, we are emotionally heated, we are ready mad, we are mad. In fact, we are breath, we are so tired. You can see the children, the women, the old ladies, they are all in, in their numbers. Taxi drivers, everybody, we are all in, in order to make this program successful. Leaders of the group outlined their next line of action if these concerns are not addressed. The stadium, look at the stadium, Kumasi Stadium. The road is good, but they have they have had another hit to it. So why? We are all MPP people here. No one is in this here. We are all MPP and we are crying for our, our road. The president should put a measure on this road tomorrow or the next day. We already planned ourselves. It's a series of events. This is the first of its kind. The next one, if you do not see any sign, we are going to bring mattresses to sleep here. After that, if you don't see any sign again, we will march. We will let people stand on the road from here to Dako. They will be there. After that, if you don't see any sign, that is where we will now do no road, no vote. The Vice President, Dr. Mohamedou Baumia, has cut sword for the construction of the Sino-Hydro-funded three-tier interchange at the Kwan Nkrumah roundabout in Takarade. The first year of the 30-month project will be a roundabout, and this would include the provision of direct access to the market circle through the Liberation Road. Dr. Baumia said the project marks the sixth interchange. The current administration has cut sword for construction. I'm happy that this interchange will bring to six the number of interchanges that the government has started in our first term in office. We are working on the Tema, Obechebi, Lamte, Pokwasi, Nungwa and Tamale interchanges. The construction of the PTC interchange 
is part of the master project support agreement between the government of Ghana and the Sino Hydro construction. And the first phase of the Sino Hydro infrastructure project covers 441 kilometers of roads and two interchanges. One being the Tamale interchange, which is the first interchange in the northern part of Ghana, and the PTC interchange, which is the first interchange in the western region. The agreement that we initiated with the government of China and the Sino Hydro Corporation. And it is a new financing arrangement. And we said when we went to China that, well, we want a lot of infrastructure. But we don't want to borrow in terms of a loan. What we want is to build our integrated aluminum industry. You're watching the City Newsroom on City TV. My name is Pierre Lacanio Furi. And I am Michael Obudu. Now, still to come in the bulletin, former President John Germani Mahama criticizes NPP over what he says is an attempt by the party to implement some of the policies highlighted in the NDC manifesto. Details of that story and more after this break, please stay with us. without time. Time is endless motion. Make time work for you. Bet Planet. Time to bet. materials for this building. I can see that. But my brother, you know we just last year you built this house? Oh yeah. When the wall started peel off like banana due to rising dam. My brother, that's been my issue. I've tried so many things, but nothing works. You know what? They even use that black rubber thing. Only before the concrete casting. You made that boiler rubber. Oh. My brother, you would have saved yourself the stress if only you used Visqui DPM from Vertigo Limited. Really? That'd be what my puppy used for help. And over so many years, the house still didn't come up. For purchases and inquiries, contact Ventigio Limited at Spinters Road, Accra, or in Kumasi at Kumasi Kwanasu. Vinsqueen DPM, no size! It's not long ago that things were normal. Good friends could meet for a good drink and share good times. And then everything changed. And our bars, the center of our communities all closed, sending us all indoors. But now, things are changing. Kakra, kakra, small, small. We're getting our lives back. Obey ye. We'll get back to the way things were. Hey, mama. Hey, you want a drink? Yeah, man. It's time for us to rise up. Hey, you back. Oh, you As we look forward to making our bar safe, Guinness Ghana will invest 10 million CDs through the Union and Boom program to get our bar owners back on their feet. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA.
Welcome back. Now, the New Patriotic Party is seeking to gain more votes in the Zongo areas in the Ashanti region, which is largely known as their stronghold. The party, as part of its measures to snatch the only three parliamentary seats occupied by the NDC out of the 47 constituencies in the region, has unveiled the committee that will spearhead the Nasara wing of the party to work towards winning more votes in Zongo communities. City News' Fatih Aminu Ibrahim reports. The Ashanti region is known as the stronghold of the New Patriotic Party. The party currently occupies 44 parliamentary seats out of the 47 constituencies in the Ashanti region. The New Patriotic Party has vowed to snatch the only three seats occupied by the National Democratic Congress, NDC, on December 7th in order to fully take control of the region. The party, as part of their strategy to win the only three seats, which are predominantly Zongo areas, has unveiled a new committee that will spearhead the Nasara wing of the party within the Zongo community. In line with this, the chief executive officer of the Zongo Development Fund has called on people from the Zongo communities to endorse their bid to develop the communities by voting for the NPP. We are serving Zongo community, not particularly for the votes. Hmm? What we are doing, the, the people need it, that's why we are doing it. We will give our best. If after giving that, the people think the reward or the reciprocal gesture should be vote, so be it. So particularly our focus is not on the vote, but we will serve our people in the best way as we can. Yes, if you mention Jurassic uh, Church, we've done a lot. I mentioned about two projects there. And it wasn't because of votes. We started before we even started thinking about votes. The Jura people need, there's a, a storm drain there. Uh, anytime it floods, um, you see people being rendered homeless. So we are going to do that, not because we want vote, but we want to serve our people. Speaking at the same event, the Ashanti Regional Minister, Simon Osei Mensa, called on the general public to play diverse roles in ensuring peace before during and after the 2020 general election. Asante man te muha ye pasungie. Ye pe asungie, asungie na ba dwari registration no. Sa asungie na ye de koto abano. Sa asungie na ye de koto abano. Obi a uda da, obi yini tri. Ye ba cheno. Ye nini be dealing no send you what you need to deal. Now, former President John Germani Mahama has criticized the government over what he says is a deliberate attempt to implement some of the policies in the NDC's manifesto. Speaking at a town hall meeting organized by the NDC in Kumasi, he cited issues related to Okada and licensure examinations as some of the policies the Ekufuado government is seeking to implement even before this year's general elections. More in this report by correspondent Edward Oponmafo. During the National Democratic Congress, NDC's town hall meeting in Kumasi, different speakers took turns to explain into details some key issues captured in the party's 2020 manifesto. The speakers touched on issues ranging from economy, agriculture, education, trade and industry, among others. Some key aspects of the NDC manifesto which were highlighted included the 10 billion big push geared towards infrastructure, withdrawal of law banning importation of savage vehicles and legalization of Okada for commercial purposes. Speaking at a town hall meeting organized by the NDC, the flag bearer of the party criticized government for what he describes as attempts to implement some of his manifesto promises ahead of the 2020 general elections. <laughs>
Yabe man kodani bi akosa private school ni free of charge. Ya fre private school owners ya se omomra na ya dwen ho dada. Se ya be fre mo na ya ne mo aye sisi. Se na be ya private schools no eh en kodani bi beti mi akọ mo school. Na manifesto a mo ka se enia dwen aye tro. Ya nya to aba o. And this is buying your mind. So what you say, MPP, your manifesto, how much I say at the year, Juban? The NDC is confident of securing more votes in the Ashanti region and other parts of the country, as it says, it has a better track record as compared to the MPP. That's the right direction because I believe they have taken the Ashanti region, they are, oh, this is a milk cow. After this one, is safe. Let's go and look for others and come and add. That's how they've taken the Ashanti region because if you look at four years, if you ask them to tell you major things that they've done in Asante, they can't. They can't. Look, they promised Asante region, Greater Accra, Northern region, interchange to ease traffic. Go to Accra. They are doing Pokwasi. The Obote Vilante is on. Tema is completed. In Tamale, it started. Kumasi, not even one. And that will be all for the City Newsroom on City TV. For more stories, visit our website, citynewsroom.com. Subscribe to City Tube on YouTube for more exclusive video content from City TV. You can download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store or the App Store and get regular news updates. Well, you can also watch CTTV on DSTV channel 363 and GoTV channel 